It has to do with interpreting why the world is doing exactly what it's doing. Why there is no peace in the Middle East. There's a direct, deep, esoteric reason why there is turmoil in the Middle East. And it has to do with the fact that because the city of David is not there and that that is not the land promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but literally when the Zionist movement picked up out of Central Europe and went backwards against the course of the light, they uh, set in motion events in the world that uh, have resulted in the conflagrations that are unfolding in reality right now. So there's, a, there's an interpretation for that. There's an interpretation for the reason uh, why the World Trade Center was uh, leveled. Why um, China and Russia have made an agreement to check American hegemony in the world. There's a meaning to all that. There's a meaning uh, for um, why China is right now making an agreement with certain uh, factions in Afghanistan um, also uh, in interest of checking American presence in Central Asia. There is a, a absolutely divine interpretation that goes with that. Why is the economy collapsing in Japan? Well, Japan, Japan's whole purpose in the historical scheme of things is to bring about a collapse of the entire Western economy. That is all written in the prophets. And so um, these are events that are getting ready to unfold in the world. And um, uh, so I guess, I guess we have um, um, some sort of sense of urgency and that we just want to make sure that those ideas are planted out everywhere. Well, it's, it's a return to archetypal images. And the archetypal images are now having their effect in the collective as well as the individual lives of the planet. It's the archetypes that have governed the course of history. And so those archetypes are working themselves out in terms of this struggle between light and darkness, good and evil, knowledge and ignorance. So it's a matter of... Um, uh, of uh, entering into the crises and waking ourselves up to the reality of God's presence in the sum of it does all. It I mean, from your own personal stand, does it bother you that the economy is collapsing or from Monday onwards, oh, no. the World Econ Economic Forum is going to be having its meetings in New York and one of the biggest <clears throat> the demonstrations no. in a decade has been organized for, before the world of Astoria? No, because, because uh, I operate on the, uh, on the process of synthesis. I understand that this thesis creates this antithesis, and out of the two emerge the new synthesis. And what is emerging is a whole new state of consciousness. And these systems are now in opposition to each other, and they are okay. struggling. At... Next question. What about, um, I guess, uh, the people who are... I don't know what you call them, students, fellow travelers, or whoever mm -hmm. visits your site or, you know, listen to you. How do they respond? How many of them have the same uh, attitude? The long run, it doesn't matter. I never know. Huh? I never know. Okay. Do you uh, care? No. <laughs> I, well, I do care. No, 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 I, I do care. I do care, but it, said, I do care. What not in the personal, not in the personal sense. I, I'm not attached to how people think of the messenger. I'm very no, that one, yeah. jealous for the message, right, right, right. not for the messenger. Yeah. So I'm, I'm constantly correcting myself yeah. to make sure that I am um, not um, insensitive right. to the way that I, that I carry the message. Right. Um, but it's the message that's important. And but the, do you care if they understand the message? Pardon me? Do you care if they understand the message? I try hard, but I understand that if the spirit hasn't opened up the consciousness, then it's not, it, it can't land. 
the seed cannot find soil. Yeah, it's, it's, bad, a, it's bad on soil, the seed cannot. That's all, that's all. Does that, does that matter to you? you no, it doesn't matter what they think of me. No, absolutely not. Uh, no, but, not what they think of you, but, but what, what, what all this leads to, yeah. where this is all leading, is to the manifestation of God's anointed ones. From the feminine side of the tree of life, which is also the Jewish side, the scripture says that the day is coming, it, there is not a day like it. It is the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob is a metaphor for humanity. Um, it is the time of humanity's trouble. And it was after he was sold into slavery? Or? Yes, yes. It's a, it's a matter of delivering ourselves out of Egypt, which is the world system. So it's a matter of awakening. And just as God has always sent deliverers into these darkest moments of human history to bring individuals out, that the study that we have been doing in the Tree of Life reveals that there is such a, um, it's not, the scripture says that I shall raise up unto them David their king, David their king. Well, the name David can only be understood in its proper context by looking into the structure of the Tree of Life and seeing the name David hieroglyphically and numerically embedded into the structure of the oracle. And it's not the name of any individual male person at all. It's a name that indicates balance, harmony, dalet va dalet. And so my whole purpose in life, my whole purpose at this time in history is to simply find the means to legitimize the fact that I'm pointing to the other side of the tree of life and saying, there are the messiahs. There are the anointed ones. And the people will say, well, why do we need them? And then I say, because this crisis is about to unfold in the earth. It is a political crisis. It is a social crises, it is an economic crisis, it is a crisis of the heart, the mind, and the spirit. When you see the institutions that you have faith in begin to collapse, realize that there's this crazy little guy standing on the corner saying that the messiahs are here. And once that catches on, once people turn their attention away from the babbling that I'm doing on the street corner and connect with that, I'm through. I'm through. Now I can, uh, you know, accept my fate, go on, and uh, there, are, there are millions of um, very ancient souls being born in our time. And, that, and, and, and it's, we, we have to help the birth process, you have to help. and we must revere it. Uh, we must uh, be there like midwives and standing uh -huh. at the womb, bringing in this, these new births, these new souls, whether they are born out of a person who's 50 or 60 years old or being born out of a womb as little tiny infants. The process of birth must be facilitated. It's and interesting. Why I asked you that question? Almost everything you have said in the last three or four minutes is very consistent with the way the old man was, who was my teacher, who passed away at age of 93. And everywhere he went, he always used to talk to me that I want peacemakers to be born, children of fire. When Armageddon is coming, yes, will stand on the side of the righteous, and you know, uh, you know, when the Antichrist comes, therefore, the support will be there. In the primo, you want to call it war between. Yes. Did he really say that? Did he use those words?
the pandavas and kauravas have decided third age of man is finished kali yuga the age of kali is coming mm. armageddon has to come the war has to come and it is finished one or the other has to win yes krishna makes the difference whoever krishna join, joins with that side will win because of his enormous military uh, uh, force which goes behind him and because of what he is so they both go to krishna's palace and he is sleeping at that time uh, duryodhana with the emperor's arrogance goes and sits next to his head above his head arjuna being more humble though he is generalis was a his feet at his feet and here we are at the feet exactly. that's <laughs> what happens is when krishna gets up you know, and he immediately says that you know welcome welcome and all that what do you want i give you any boon that you want him duryodhana thinks so you know he has said it so i am stiff and all that you know arjuna is going to ask for the 16 akshohini 16 akshohini is it's some enormous number of armed soldiers and chariots and this and that i am screwed in uh so he says the war is coming then uh, so krishna says all right i will stand on one side alone and unarmed and my 16 akshohinis of troops will stand on the other side choose and since i saw you first i gave you the boon you choose first arjuna who was not a wise man throughout the mahabharata war you know even at the time he says nakamshaye uh, vijayam krishna nacharajyam sukhani cha kim narajyen govinda kim bhoga jeevitena va right in the first chapter is asked nakamshaye vijayam krishna i do not want victory o krishna nacharaj not do i want the comforts of empire kim narajyen govinda what is the use of all this victory in battle you know? what is the use of all this power and wealth you know? so he was asking and you know he was sunk in sorrow and all that but at that time he was wise he said i choose you so so he got what he wanted duryodhana got what he wanted but the main thing was krishna sat on the fence right through until he was made to force a choice so a lot of these things which are coming in the last mm. particularly 5 years or so for 5 years has been a great change in the way i have personally gone about things and myself yeah yes uh, 